In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop. Out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. He started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. He started to look for some food. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he still was hungry. He started to look for some food. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums. But he was still hungry. He started to look for some food. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries. But he was still hungry. He started to look for some food. On Friday, he ate through five oranges. But he was still hungry. On Saturday, he ate one slice of Swiss cheese one pickle your one piece of chocolate cake one ice cream cone one slice of salami one cupcake one piece of cherry pie one lollipop one sausage and one slice of watermelon. That night, he had a stomachache. The next day was Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf and after that, he felt much better. Now he wasn't hungry anymore. And he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big fat caterpillar. He built a small house called a cocoon around himself. He stayed in for more than two weeks. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon, pushed his way out, and he was a beautiful butterfly. Brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? by Bill Martin Jr. and Eric Carle. And if you'd like to buy the book, check in the link description down below. Brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? I see a red bird looking at me. Red bird, red bird, what do you see? I see a yellow duck looking at me. Yellow duck, yellow duck, what do you see? I see a blue horse looking at me. Blue horse, blue horse, what do you see? I see a green frog looking at me. Green frog, green frog, what do you see? I see a purple cat looking at me. Purple cats, purple cats, what do you see? I see a white dog looking at me. White dog, white dog, what do you see? I see a black sheep looking at me. Black sheep, black sheep, what do you see? 
Meh. I see a goldfish looking at me. Goldfish, goldfish, what do you see? Blub, blub. I see a teacher blub, looking at me. Blub. Teacher, teacher, what do you see? I see children looking at me. Children, children, what do you see? We see a brown bear, a red bird, a yellow duck, a blue horse, a green frog, a purple cat, a white dog, a black sheep, a goldfish and a teacher looking at us. That's what we see. The End The Very Lonely Firefly by Eric Carle As the sun set, a little firefly was born. It stretched its wings and flew off into the darkening sky. It was a lonely firefly and it flashed its light, searching for other fireflies. The firefly saw a light and flew towards it. But it was not another firefly. It was a light bulb lighting up the night. Hear that noise? The firefly saw a light and flew towards it. But it was not another firefly. It was a candle flickering in the night. What's going on? Firefly saw a light and flew towards it. But it was not another firefly. It was a flashlight shining in the night. Quiet out there. The firefly saw a light and flew towards it. But it was not another firefly. It was a lantern glowing in the night. Hey, stop fighting! What is it? The firefly saw several lights and flew towards them, but they were not other fireflies. There was a dog and a cat and an owl, their eyes reflecting the lights. The firefly saw a light and flew towards it, but it was not another firefly. It was a car's headlight flooding the night. The firefly saw many lights and flew towards them. But they were not other fireflies. They were fireworks sparkling and glittering and shimmering in the night. When all was quiet, the firefly flew through the night, flashing its light, looking and searching again. Then the very lonely firefly saw what it had been looking for. A group of fireflies flashing their lights. Now the firefly wasn't lonely anymore. The End The Very Busy Spider by Eric Carle Early one morning the wind blew and the spider crossed the field. A thin silky thread trailed from his body. The spider landed on a fence post near a farmyard and began to spin a web with her silky thread. Nay, nay, said the horse. Want to go off on a ride? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Moo, said the cow. Want to eat some grass? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. To the sheep. Want to run in the meadow? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. <laughs> said the goat. Want to jump on the rocks? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Oink, oink, grunted the pig. Want to roll in the mud? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Woof, woof the dog. Want to chase a cat? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. 
Quack, quack, called the dog. Want to go for a swim? The spider didn't answer. She had now finished her web. Gugglooloo, cried the rooster. Want to catch a pesty fly? And the spider caught the fly in the web, just like that. Who, who? Asked the owl. Who built this beautiful web? The spider didn't answer. She had fallen asleep. It had been a very, very busy day. The end. The Tiny Seed by Eric Carle. And if you like to buy the book, check in the link description down below. It is autumn. A strong wind is blowing. It blows flower seeds high in the air and carries them far across the land. One of the seeds is tiny, smaller than the others. Will it be able to keep up with the others? And where are they all going? One of the seeds flies higher than the others. Up, up it goes. It flies too high and the sun's hot rays burns it. But the tiny seed sails on with the others. Another seed lands on a tall and icy mountain. The ice never melts and the seed cannot grow. The rest of the seeds fly on, but the tiny seed does not go as fast as the others. Now they fly over the ocean. One seed falls into the water and drowns. The other sail on with the wind, but the tiny seed does not go as high as the others. One seed drifts down onto the desert. It is hot and dry, and the seed cannot grow. Now the tiny seed is flying very low, but the wind pushes it on with the others. Finally, the wind stops and the seeds fall gently down on the ground. A bird comes by and eats one seed. The tiny seed is not eaten. It is so small that the bird does not see it. Now it is winter. After the long trip, the seed settles down. They look just as if they are going to sleep in the earth. Snow falls and covers them like soft white blanket. A hungry mouse that also lives in the ground eats a seed for his lunch. But the tiny seed lies very still and the mouse does not see it. Now it is spring. After a few months the snow has melted. It is really spring. Birds fly by, the sun shines, rain falls. The seed grow so round and full that they start to burst open a little. Now they are not seeds anymore, they are plants. First they send roots down into the earth. Then their little stems and leaves begin to grow up towards the sun and air. There is another plant that grows much faster than the new little plants. It is a big fat weed and it takes all the sunlight and the rain away from the others of the small new plants, and that little plant dies. The tiny seed hasn't begun to grow yet. It will be too late. Hurry! But finally, it too starts to grow into a plant. The warm weather also brings the children out to play. They too have been waiting for the sun and springtime. One child doesn't see the plants as he runs along and oh he breaks one now it cannot grow anymore the tiny plant that grew from the tiny seeds is growing fast but its neighbors grows even faster before the tiny plant has three leaves on the other plant has seven and look a bud and now even a flower but what is happening First there are footsteps, then a shadow looms over them, and a hand reaches down and breaks off the flower. A boy has picked the flower to give to a friend. It is summer. Now the tiny plant from the tiny seed is all alone. It grows on and on and doesn't stop. The sun shines on and it rain waters it. It has many leaves. It grows taller and taller. It is taller than the people. It is taller than the trees. It is taller than the houses. And now a flower grows on it. People come from far and near to look at this flower. It is the tallest flower they have ever seen. It is a giant flower. All summer long, the birds and the bees and butterflies come visiting. They have never seen such a big and beautiful flower.
Now it is autumn again. The days grow shorter, the night grows cooler. And the wind carries yellow and red leaves past the flower. Some petals drop from the giant flower and they sail along with the bright leaves over the land and down to the ground. The wind blows harder. The flower has lost almost all of its petals. It sways and bends from the wind, but the wind grows stronger and shakes the flower. Once more, the wind shakes the flower and this time the flower seeds pod opens. Out come many tiny seeds that quickly sail far away on the wind. The end. Panda Bear, Panda Bear, what do you see? By Bill Martin Jr. and Eric Coral. And if you'd like to buy the book, check in the link description down below. Panda Bear, Panda Bear, what do you see? I see a bald eagle soaring at me. Bald eagle, bald eagle, what do you see? I see a water buffalo charging by me. Water buffalo, water buffalo, what do you see? I see a spider monkey swinging by me. Spider monkey, spider monkey, what do you see? I see a green sea turtle swimming by me. Green sea turtle, green sea turtle, what do you see? I see a macaroni penguin strutting by me. Macaroni penguin, macaroni penguin, what do you see? I see a sea lion splashing by me. Sea lion, sea lion, what do you see? I see a red wolf sneaking by me. Red wolf, red wolf, what do you see? I see a whooping crane flying by me. Whooping crane, whooping crane, what do you see? I see a black panther strolling by me. Black panther, black panther, what do you see? I see a dreaming child watching over me. Dreaming child, dreaming child, what do you see? I see a panda bear, a bald eagle, a water buffalo, a spider monkey, a green sea turtle, a macaroni penguin, a sea lion, a red wolf, a whooping crane, and a black panther. All wild and free, that's what I see. The polar end. Bear, polar bear, what do you hear? By Bill Martin Jr. and Eric Coral. And if you'd like to buy the book, check in the link description down below. Polar bear, polar bear. What do you hear? I hear a lion roaring in my ear. Lion, lion, what do you hear? I hear a hippopotamus snorting in my ear. Hippopotamus, hippopotamus, what do you hear? I hear a flamingo fluttering in my ear. Flamingo, flamingo, what do you hear? I hear a zebra. <laughs> Braying in my ear. Zebra, zebra, what do you hear? I hear a boa constrictor hissing in my ear. Boa constrictor, boa constrictor, what do you hear? I hear an elephant trumpeting in my ear. Elephant, elephant, what do you hear? I hear a leopard snarling in my ear. Leopard, leopard, what do you hear? I hear a peacock yelping in my ear. Peacock, peacock, what do you hear? I hear a walrus blowing in my ear. Walrus, walrus, what do you hear? I hear a zookeeper whistling in my ear. Zookeeper, zookeeper, what do you hear? I hear children growling like a polar bear, roaring like a lion, snorting like a hippopotamus. Flutting like a flamingo, braying like a zebra, hissing like a boa constrictor, trumpeting like an elephant, snarling like a leopard, yelping like a peacock, bellowing like a walrus. That's what I hear. The end.
The Very Quiet Cricket by Eric Carroll. And if you'd like to buy this book, check in the link description down below. One warm day, from a tiny egg, a little cricket was born. Welcome, chirped the big cricket, rubbing his wings together. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Good morning, whizzed a locust, spinning through the air. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Hello, whispered a praying mantis, scraping his huge front legs together. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Good day, crunched a worm, munching its way out of an apple. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Hi, babbled a spittlebug, slurping in a sea of froth. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Good afternoon. Screeched a cicada, clinging to a branch of a tree. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. How are you? Hummed a bumblebee, flying from flower to flower. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Good evening, whirred a dragonfly, gliding above the water. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Good night, buzzed the mosquitoes, dancing among the stars. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. A lunar moth sailed quietly through the night. And the cricket enjoyed the stillness. As the lunar moth disappeared silently into the distance, the cricket saw another cricket. She too was a very quiet cricket. Then he rubbed his wings together one more time, and this time he chirped the most beautiful sound that she had ever heard. The end. House for Hermit Crab by Eric Carle. And if you'd like to buy the book, check in the link description down below. Time to move, said Hermit Crab one day in January. I've grown too big for this little shell. He had felt safe and snug in his shell, but now it was too snug. Hermit Crab stepped out of the shell and onto the floor of the ocean. But it was frightening out in the open sea without any shell to hide in. What if a big fish comes along and attacks me? He thought. I must find a new house soon. Early in February, Hermit Crab found just the house he was looking for. It was a big shell and strong. He moved right in, wiggling and waggling about inside to see what felt. It felt just right. But it looked so, well, so plain. Thought Hermit Crab. In March, Hermit Crab met some sea anemones. They swayed gently back and forth in the water. How beautiful you are," said Hermit Crab. "Would one of you be willing to come and live on my house? It is so plain; it needs you." "I'll come," whispered a small sea anemone. Gently, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and put it on his shell. In April, Hermit Crab passed a flock of starfish moving slowly along the sea floor. How handsome you are," said Hermit Crab. "Would one of you be willing to decor my house?" "I would," signaled a little sea star. Carefully, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and put it on his house. In May, Hermit Crab discovered some coral. They were hard and didn't move. How pretty you are," 
said Hermit's Crab. Would one of you be willing to help make my house more beautiful? I would, creaked a crusty crawler. Gingerly, Hermit's Crab picked up with his claw and placed it on his shell. In June, Hermit's Crab came to a group of snails crawling over a rock on the ocean floor. They grazed as they went picking up algae and bits of debris and leaving a near path behind them. How tidy and hard working you are, said Hermit's Crab. Would one of you be willing to come and help clean my house? I would, offered one of the snails. Happily, Hermit's Crab picked it up with his claw and placed it on his shell. In July, Hermit's Crab came upon several sea urchins. They had sharp prickly needles. How fierce you look, said Hermit's Crab. Would one of you be willing to protect my house? I would, answered a spiky sea urchin. Gratefully, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and placed it near his shell. In August, Hermit Crab and his friends wandered into a forest of seaweed. It's so dark in here, thought Hermit Crab. How dim it is, murmured the sea anemone. How gloomy it is, whispered the starfish. How murky it is, complained the coral. I can't see, said the snail. It's like a nightmare, cried the sea urchin. In September, Hermit's crab spotted a school of lanternfish darting through the dark water. How bright you all are, said Hermit's crab. Would one of you be willing to light up our house? I would, replied one lanternfish, and it swam over near the shell. In October, Hermit's crab approached a pile of smooth pebbles. How sturdy you are, said Hermit's crab. Would you mind if I rearranged you? Not at all, answered the pebbles. Hermit's crab picked them up one by one with his claw and built a wall around his shell. Now my house is perfect cheered Hermit Crab. But in November, Hermit's Crab felt that his shell seemed a bit too small. Little by little over the year, Hermit's Crab had grown. Soon he would have to find another bigger home. But he had come to love his friends, the sea anemone, the starfish, the coral, the sea urchin, the snail, the lanternfish, and even the smooth pebbles. They have been so good to me thought Hermit Crab. They're like a family. How can I ever leave them? In December, a smaller Hermit Crab passed by. I have outgrown my shell, she said. Would you know a place for me? I have outgrown my house too, answered Hermit Crab. I must move on. You are welcome to live here. But promise to be good to my friends. I promise said the little crab. The following January, Hermit's crab stepped out and the little crab moved in. Couldn't stay in that little shell forever, said Hermit's crab as he waved goodbye. The ocean floor looked wider than he had remembered, but Hermit's crab wasn't afraid. Soon he'd spied the perfect house, a big, empty shell. It looked, well, a little plain, but... Sponges, he thought. Barnacles, clownfish, sand dollars, electric eels. Oh, there are so many possibilities. I can't wait to get started. The End From Head to Toe by Eric Carroll And if you'd like to buy the book, check in the link description down below. I am Penguin and I can turn my head. Can you do it? I can do it. I am a giraffe and I bend my neck. Can you do it? I can do it. I am a buffalo and I raise my shoulders. Can you do it? I can do it. I am a monkey and I wave my arms. Can you do it? 
I can do it. I am a seal and I clap my hands. Can you do it? I can do it. I am a gorilla and I thump my chest. Can you do it? I can do it. I am a cat and I arch my back. Can you do it? I can do it. I am a crocodile and I wriggle my hips. Can you do it? I can do it. I am a camel and I bend my knees. Can you do it? I can do it. I am a donkey and I kick my legs. Can you do it? I can do it. I am an elephant. I stomp my foot. Can you do it? I can do it. I am I and I wriggle my toe. Can you do it? I can do it. I can do it. The end.